when they can't make sumo. You get your friends together and you fake some sumo. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. It's the not so, not so far show. Not so far show, far show, yeah. yeah. Not so, not so far show. Not so far show, yeah. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake for the fourth time. <laughs> this is Flerick. <laughs> oh, finally, and this is Mac. <laughs> oh, and I, God, we made it. Uh, I believe Jake needs to introduce Flerick a little bit more honorably, uh, as one might say. Yeah, I lost the stupid contest, but <laughs> he made us take so many tries to get our introduction correct that I, oh. I mean, oh, oh. I have to do it still. So, yes, Yokozuna Flerick is being a real dick. Uh, yes, he uh, is. Okay, that's uh, fair. Uh, <laughs> well, I, could, I could use with a little bit less sass, Sukibito Jake. Ooh. We'll see where uh, we'll see where the night takes us. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of which, I guess I think I one of the punishments was to make some knock knock jokes, and I'm feeling some suffering for everyone on this call apparently, as this is the fourth take to get this going. Uh, so <laughs> let's uh, let's hear some of those knock knock jokes, or at least one of those knock knock jokes. Okay, we'll start off with uh, probably my favorite one, the mo- the one that'll be most emotionally satisfying to me. Uh, let's uh, let's go with uh, Ryan. Ryan, you be the responder for this one. Sure. Knock knock. Who's there? Max. Max who? Max. Knock knock jokes will never see the light of day. Sad I am. <laughs> How sad I am. <laughs> How many pages did you get up to, Mac, when you thought that you were going to be the loser? I just uh, let's, let's move up with the show. I don't want to say. <laughs> All right, they were Everybody... just gold. They were just turds polished with gold. <laughs> and everyone, uh, pour one out for Max. Terrible jokes uh... that now we won't be subjected to. Yes. We are all truly better for this experience, and this may be the first recap episode where Mac has truly been punished because he will not be able to read his knock-knock jokes. (laughs) Oh my god, it really is. (laughs) This is the worst. Yeah, this punishment isn't so bad for me. Yeah. (laughs) I think we're all the better for it, really. Yeah. Right sure, Artsuki B, though, Jake. (laughs) What's my name again? (laughs) Yokozuna Flarek. Right, you are. <laughs> Flarek is in a mood today. I know. I like this. What? <laughs> who is this new Flarek? Uh, I, this is the Yokozuna bringing out the the Yokozuna duties have changed me in many ways, which where I want to be dicks to all my underlings <laughs> all the time. Oh, <laughs> I, I think what it is is it's the back to back wins that Flarek has had in the prediction series. So he hasn't had a chance to cool down, and so his dickishness just grows until his <laughs> ego gets put into check when he loses a Basho. Hey, that, two titles in a row. That's that's qualification to be promoted to podcast Yokozuna, isn't it? Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I think I have the honorary title for life now. Yeah, so we all have to call him Yokozuna, right? Yes. I don't know about that, because I think Mac has won back-to-back before, and I'm not on board with that. Ooh, yeah, good you're right. Point. That's a deal-breaker. Yeah. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on with the show. Hey, Mac. I was about to say. Oh, go ahead, Jake. Hey, Mac. Knock, knock. <laughs> Not who's there? N. N. Who? No. N. Ho. Oh, <laughs> you used one of my old ones. You came up Is with that... that one before too. I don't know. I'm certainly not doing the research to N-Do. find your old joke. No, damn it! Move <laughs> on. That's a very <laughs> question. I actually I wouldn't be shocked if this whole thing is all of Jake's, all of Mac's old knock knock <laughs> jokes from the first time around. <laughs> Just remember how much effort that would have taken and how much effort you know that I'm willing to put in. Since it wasn't in spreadsheet form, I know it was zero effort. Exactly. <laughs> All of that being said, that was just a very long preamble to say, welcome to the Not So Basho recap episode, <laughs> where we talk about sumo wrestling and not just sumo jokes and how big of a dick Flarek is. <laughs> right you are, Ryan. <laughs> so in case for some reason you don't know, we just wrapped up the Not So Basho, which was held behind closed doors and without camera access 
but the four esteemed members of the G sorry, three esteemed members and Jake of the GSB crew <laughs> got to watch the tournament <laughs> and record the results. And so we're relaying to you guys what we saw at the tournament. Unfortunately, no cameras were allowed, so you couldn't see what was there. Uh, if you want an approximation of what happened, you can actually go over to YouTube. Uh, YouTube user uh, Tanar Dial, I believe it's T-A-N-A-R space D-I-A-L. He has a list of videos for previous matchups that had happened between two Rikshi for every single day. Uh, so you can go back and watch and see an approximation of what this Basho looked like. Yeah. So thank and you to him for doing that. And, and some uh, fun animations for the matchups that never happened yes. before in the later days. Ooh. <laughs> So with all that being said, let's get to the results of the Basho that only our eight eyes were allowed to see. The Yusho winner for the third time in his career is Sekiwake Mitakeyumi. And I believe this is a, it either ties or sets the record for most Yushos without being an Ozeki. Yeah, I got that one ready to go for you here. We're, uh, I, I got the list of all the Sekiwake ever and Mitakeyumi was already tied with Koto Nishiki, a guy who wrestled in the 80s and 90s. Uh, they are the only two people to win multiple Yushos without hitting Ozeki rank. Mitakiumi now breaks that tie and is the only one with three. Wow. that's I don't know if that's like an incredible career for him or a disappointing career. Hey. He could eh, probably live with incredible. it. He's got yeah, three One Yusho <laughs> is amazing, as, as shown with Tokusho Ryu. That's a that's a career well spent. <laughs> Indeed. All right, and our June Yusho winner for the second time in his career is Asanoyama. He fin- yeah, yeah, yeah. oh sorry, Mitaki Yumi finished with a 13 and 2 record. Asanoyama had a 12 and 3 record, so just one behind Mitaki Yumi. And then we have a list of special prize winners. So Mitaki Yumi, he picks up two special prizes. The Gino Show Technique Prize went to him. That's his third career and ninth overall special prize. And the Shukun Show Outstanding Performance Prize also went to Mitaki Yumi. That's his sixth Outstanding Performance Prize and his tenth prize overall. Uh, Taka No Show also picked up a Shukun Show Outstanding Performance Prize. That went to him because he had a winning record and also defeated the Yusho winner, which was Mitaki Yumi. Uh, so that is his first career Outstanding Performance Prize and his second prize overall. And then we had one person get a Kanto Show Fighting Spirit Prize, and that went to Sada No Umi, who finished with an 11-4 and record. I believe the best record of his career, or at least tied for it. Uh, that is his second career Kanto show prize and his second overall uh, special prize. So that is your list of special prize winners. Uh, noticeably absent from the list of special prize winners, Jun Yusho winners, Yusho winners, or uh, Kinboshi takers is Kagayaki. As <laughs> still is notable, still. I was going to say, still. is that surprising? <laughs> Maybe it's not notable. It's notable. I'm going to say it's the notable, but not volumes. surprising. <laughs> Uh, That's but I'm going to keep bringing this up until, until something happens because it's just hilarious to me. Uh, one other thing that is notable about that list to me, uh, is that Ishiura, despite being the tournament leader for like multiple days, he faltered so much in that second half of the tournament that he didn't even end up with a prize. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he finished the final five days with a one in five record, and that's not going to get you a special prize. He really faltered down the stretch when it mattered most. So uh, he still ended up with his best record in the Makuuchi division tied with his Makuuchi debut. But yeah, just with Sada no Umi and others like Nishikigi and Chiyo Taidu all ending up with 11 wins. He was the boss of the first two uh, five day stanzas, but you fall on the last one. Nobody's going to care. Ouch. <laughs> oh, hey, I got a knock-knock joke for you. Yep. Hey, Flarek. Knock-knock. Wait, what's my name? Yokozuna Flarek. Knock-knock. <laughs> Who's there? Taka Keisho failed. Taka... <laughs> <laughs> Taka Keisho failed who? All of us. Oh. He did. Oh, he man, really man. did. Uh, oh, alluding to man. the fact that Takakesho finished this Basho with a 2-9-4 record and will drop back down to the Sekiwake rank 
uh, for the second time in his career that he's dropping from the Ozeki rank. But we'll, we'll talk about more, him more in a little bit. Uh, we haven't had a chance to kind of recap the days 11 through 15. We've already had episodes for days 1 through 10. So let's kind of walk everybody through how the U Show was won. And we will start on day 11, where we had a five-way tie at 9 and 2 for the lead. We had Ishiura, who, as we mentioned, had that white hot start with nine straight wins, but he lost his next two. We also had Sada no Umi and Toku Shoryu with hot starts in the Maegashira ranks, also obviously with nine and two records. And then Asanoyama and Mitaki Yumi, uh, two up and comers that look to be kind of the top guys of their generation. They were also leading at the day 11 mark. Uh, noticeably absent from that list is Hakuho and Kakuryu. Uh, Neither one of them were really in their top form, and both were already already had three losses by the time day 11 rolled around. Yeah, neither of those guys were even tied for the lead starting on mm. day five. So kind of a weird situation to have both of them with early losses, but uh, neither of them really ended up being much of a... I'm sorry, we'll, we'll get to the details on it, but yeah, I think we definitely need to dive into the Yokozuna quite a bit here. Yeah, and we will. Um but let's go on to day 12 and kind of what our matchups looked like amongst the leaders. So we had uh, an immediate knockoff match between Sada no Umi and Toku Shoryu, where the winner would be guaranteed a share of the lead going into day 13. And Sada no Umi won that match uh, and knocked Toku Shoryu, not out of the Yusho race, but one behind the pack of leaders at that point. Uh, we also had Ishiura go up against Daisho in what would be his first match against the Sanyaku ranks in this tournament as he picked up his previous nine wins all against Maegashira. Since Ishiura was ranked Maegashira 8, that makes sense. Uh, but, oh no, he did, I forgot. He did win this match against Daisho. So Ishiura showing that maybe he's not just a flash in the pan, might stick around to win this. I think we already discussed that that did not happen. Uh, <laughs> But he did pick up a win Poor over. <laughs> yeah, he did pick up that win over Komosubi Daisho, and then we have Awayama versus Asanoyama, the match that is going to make Asanoyama just kick himself because this is what cost him the U show as he lost to Maegashira Four Awayama and knocked Asanoyama one behind uh, Mitaki Yumi uh, from this point forward, and after. Asanoyama, I believe Asanoyama defeated Mitaki Yumi too. So this is what prevented a day 15 playoff between Asanoyama and Mitaki Yumi for the U show. And maybe Asanoyama could have taken that as he already won their first mashup in the tournament. Hey, kind of a weird, a weird uh, stat here. Asanoyama, Aoyama all time. Uh, they are four and three in favor of Asanoyama. That is not mm. a matchup that I would have figured to be a close one. You know, one of the more one dimensional no. pusher thrusters versus like, you know, the guy that a lot of us think is the next Yokozuna. It's kind of strange to me. Mm -hmm. What is is it like fairly spread out about who has won or is Asanoyama won more recently? Because I wonder, I mean, Asanoyama, it's just the past year that he's really elevated to this heightened level. So maybe when he was still getting his butt kicked uh, around like the Magashira eight, nine, ten ranks over a year ago. Maybe that's where he was picking up some losses yeah. against Aoyama. And yeah, Aoyama's actually, always been at this super high level of just can be uh, anyone. Yeah, of of near Yokozuna <laughs> caliber. Absolutely. Good point, Ryan. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. That's I even know. more of an insult to so be the Jake. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know. Ryan's usually the one talking up Aoyama as if he's a future Yokozuna so I thought I'd you know just toss that jab in there yeah, good job good job but no it's it's fairly spread out over the last uh it looks like the last two and a half years they have been facing off uh on and off and it's it's just a mix okay there's, there's no there's no clear pattern there really yeah. okay maybe we'll find maybe we'll find a clear pattern uh, especially if Asanoyama gets promoted to Yokozuna in the next year or so as Aoyama <laughs> is completely incapable of defeating a Yokozuna. <laughs> yeah. I think he maybe Ozeki. He Ozeki though. Hey, he has yeah, Ozeki I, down. He does. And so after day 12, Oh no, sorry. Forgot about one match. We had Mitaki Yumi versus Kakuryu. And yeah, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mitaki Yumi beat Kakuryu for the sixth time in his career. Uh, and Kakuryu is clearly not healthy at this point. Uh, 
we have to assume that he wasn't confident that he was going to be able to pick up nine or 10 wins if he stayed in the Basho, uh, because they call 10 wins a Yokozuna Kachikoshi and anything below that, you're going to start getting some pressure on you to do better. Uh, he might get that anyways after this performance, but he pulls out of the tournament citing injury as kind of an excuse for, Hey, I was injured. That's why I didn't get to 10 wins. Uh, but yeah, so after day 12, Kakuryu pulled out of the tournament at this point. And as we mentioned, Mitakiyumi, he's going to be tied for the lead at this point. And he is probably in the best position of anybody at this point because he's the highest ranked person with like pretty much no Sanyaku matches left to face. Uh, he could go up against Daisho, who's five and seven at this point, lower rank than him, but he had already fought uh cock to you he had already fought i believe he fought hakuho on day 11 uh, yep. he already fought asanoyama and so there's nobody really in the way of mitaki yumi from taking the yusha which is as we all know what happened yeah those but, last three days the only potential or the the highest potential matchup he could have had would have been takakesho if he was around mm-hmm. yeah so at the end of day 12, we had a three-way lead at 10 and 2 with Sada Naomi, Ishiura, and Mitaki Yumi. So I want to ask you guys, your mindset after day 12, how much more excited were you when it was Ishiura as the leader of the tournament for like, ooh, our shocking Maigashira winner, than when Sada Naomi was tied for the lead for the tournament? What's, what's the difference in hype there for those two guys, Mac? Did you say hype or height? <laughs> Either one is fairly applicable. Oh, okay, very good. Well, clearly, if you saw the uh, wonderful pics from uh, Twitter, Ishiura is actually a giant among men standing <laughs> above Hakuho. I mean, seriously, that just said it all. <laughs> but no, when um, when I saw that Sadanomi was tied with Ishiura, I was like, oh, you know, all right, he's he's kind of doing his thing. But Ishiura, come on, this this is the boy here, and then. Come Mitaki on. Yumi comes along and he's like, <laughs> eh, it's Mitaki Yumi. He's still going to blow it. Yeah, right. it looks to be about uh, 11 centimeter difference of height. No. Between the two. <laughs> what is four. that in English units? Uh, it's like uh, four inches. Okay. Huh, Google like Sensei, that. tell me. <laughs> 4.3 inches. Oh, Not too bad, Tsukimito Jake. Jake. <laughs> you might have a future with uh, Sumo Facts. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, in your future. If you it's keep very it. fortunate for the podcast that I have a job where I do math. It's, yes. fi- it's finally paying off for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, are we talking about uh, sumo facts and knowledge? No, no, no. Don't get him started. Move along. Move along. Jake, tell us about the hype. Uh, oh. knock, I was knock. hoping. You, I was hoping. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you could tell us more about some knock knock jokes. Yokozuna Flaric, knock knock. Uh, who's there? Overly aggressive Hakuho Tachiai. Overly aggressive. Ta- ta- ha- <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's good. Yeah, not too bad. Day 13, we have a matchup between two leaders, Sada no Umi, who is at Maigashira 12, jumping all the way up to face Mitaki Yumi at Sekiwake. Uh, Sada no Umi no longer getting a free pass facing all of the Kotos, as we described before. He he did the full Koto, this Basho. Uh but this is his first match against a Sanyaku Rikshi, and he performed exactly how you would expect a Maigashira 12 against a Sanyaku Rikshi. He just absolutely got steamrolled by Mitaki Yumi. So Mitaki Yumi picks up the win there. He is going to be at 11-2, and two, knocking Sada Naomi down to 10-3. and three. And also on day 13, the other co-leader, Ishiura, he went up against Ozeki Asanoyama, and Asanoyama... Steaming mad from his loss the day before just absolutely pummels Ishiura to the ground. And it just that is the beginning of the end for Ishiura as he did not pick up a win after that day 12 one. Uh, so at this point, after day 13, it is Mitaki Yumi alone in the lead at 11 and two. And then we have six Rikshi that are 10 and three behind him. We have Sada Naomi. We have. Uh, Ishiura, I believe we have Chiyotaidu, Toko Shoryu, uh, we've got Hakuho, and somebody else that I'm forgetting. Asanoyama. Uh, that's the one. So yeah. How did you forget future Yokozuna Asanoyama? It's it's an embarrassment on my part, and I retire from the podcast. Oh, that's oh. nice. <laughs> Yokozuna Flaric, grab the wheel! <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Yokozuna Flaric! Uh, 
What well, uh, if you can find us on the uh, social <laughs> media, <laughs> Facebook, Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> but oh, let's uh, let's uh, I'm gonna hand the wheel back over to my my trusty my trusty Ozeki, uh Jake not Jake but Ryan <laughs> <laughs> Jake Ryan they're pract- practically practically yeah, yeah. oh. same person oh the voice yeah, is one, the same one of us has won a sumo trivia contest and the other hasn't <gasps> that is true oh, damn basically he, he the does have it there oh yeah uh yeah the context for that there was I think the U S sumo they put on like a trivia night over some uh, some kind of virtual hangout, and there, there was kind of a fifty question quiz that Ryan proved to be the best at and kicked total butt. No, but it was awesome in general. It was great just doing the sumo quiz and talking with other sumo fans. <laughs> yep, it was good time. I was a nervous wreck the entire time through because I was leading the whole thing and was just terrified I was going to blow it. So I could not enjoy it at all. Aww, <laughs> you were worried you were going to pull an Ishiura. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Ooh. Yes. Yep. But luckily, it, I was like Mitaki Yumi. I was in the lead. I didn't let any of the posers down below get to me and easily won the thing. And Jake yeah. lost by uh, not showing up. Yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> but yeah, big thanks to Ed Sucheski who put that together, a uh, guy that we interviewed a couple weeks ago on the podcast. You should check that out. Let's move on to day 14, our matchups that we have there. Uh, first up, we're going to have Ishiura going up against Mitaki Yumi. And you know the result of this matchup based on the conversations that we've been having. I'm not going to go into it. And really, that's I mean, that's the only matchup of a leader that we have. So Mitaki Yumi is still the sole leader at 12-2. and two, And we had three guys in the trailing pack drop off. So we only had three trailing him going into day 15. At 11 and 3, we had Hakuho, Asanoyama, and Sada no Umi. And so everybody knows me and how much I love playoff scenarios. Day 13, I was real excited with one guy in the lead and then six guys trailing at 10 and 3. Like, ooh, maybe we'll get like a six way playoff or a five way playoff and some crazy stuff like that. Unfortunately, after day 14, we were, we had the potential to have either a two way playoff or a three way playoff. So if Mitaki Yumi lost to Toku Shoryu on day 15 and Sada no Umi lost to his day 15 matchup of Shodai, then the winner of Hakuho versus Asanoyama would face Mitaki Yumi in an immediate playoff. Or if Mitaki Yumi lost to Toku Shoryu and Sada no Umi won his match, then those two would face the winner of Hakuho and Asanoyama in a three-way Tomoe Sen playoff. So, you know, I was very excited going into the Toku Shoryu mitaki Yumi playoff or match because there's nothing I love more than a playoff. Uh, based on the conversation that we've had leading up to this, day 15, everybody knows Tokushoryu Mitaki Yumi wasn't even a contest. Mitaki Yumi blew Tokushoryu out of the doyo, just railroaded him right out of there, denying everyone, particularly me, the playoff fun. Uh, but yes, Mitaki Yumi wins that, clinching his third Yusho with a 13 and 2 record. Hey, Ryan. Yes, Jake. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mitaki Yumi has more Yusho than Kisuno Sato. Mitaki Yumi has more Yusho than Kisuno Sato who? Mitaki Yumi has more Yusho than Kisuno Sato, but still isn't even Ozeki. Hey, oh! <laughs> that is a true fact. That is a sumo fact. The truth hurts. Oh, yeah, sumo what, fact. The truth hurts. Ryan, Ryan's good at those, apparently. I am. Mitaki Yumi hasn't given me man tears yet. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe that's what's holding him back. Ooh, yeah. Good point, Larry. <laughs> So yes, all saw a dramatic t- win, a couple dra- dramatic wins, then he'll be good to go. Well, we saw, we saw Takakesho with the tears. I think I can't remember if he had any tears after his Yusho win or when he secured his promotion to Ozeki. But it seems like those big moments require manly tears. Otherwise, you're just not going to break through the glass ceiling there. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I- breaking through into... Flarek being interested in you. That's the big time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, no, no. I just meant breaking through like to the Ozeki and Yokozuna level. Kisen Osato showed emotion. Boom. Yokozuna. Takakesho showed emotion. Boom. Ozeki. Mitakiyumi. No emotion. Still Sekiwake. And Toku Shoryu. Tons of emotion. Kind of. Hey, uh, he, he finished 11 and 4 this tournament. Yeah. He's on his way. That joke kind of crashed midway through, and I remember yeah. that he did well. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> his story's not done. I, we'll I do feel the need to bring it up. So we were all in Japan for those two weeks. Uh, I got to say, it was pretty hot out. 
It was very hot outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, that does give credence does. to your theory. There's also a lot of air conditioning in that the gymnasium. That was nice, though. Uh, Mitakiyomi, Mitakiyomi, <laughs> he's uh, he's coming into the Nagoya, the the hottest of the tournaments. On a he he already busted through to a slightly cooler weather to get a U show. So mm-hmm. you know maybe it's all can, coming together for him. Yeah, I mean it's all coming together. I, I mean Nagoya is only going to be hot, uh, uh, more hot. And then Aki, Aki is <laughs> probably still going to be kind of hot. So you know, you know, similar to uh, Natsu, kind of hot. So. Yeah, you know, if he gets three in a row, they'll probably just bump him straight to Yokozuna, won't they? I don't know. That's, I mean, it's obviously <laughs> never happened before, so, so we yeah, don't right. know because he's not getting an Ozeki promotion after this one. If he got a, another uh, Yusho in Nagoya, for sure, they Ozeki. they might, yeah, they might grab that ten and five record he had at Maegashira three in the Haru Basho, package those together into an Ozeki run. Which, there's yeah, no way you shows in a row. There's yeah. no way they're not promoting him to Ozeki. And then if he wins a third straight in his first tournament as Ozeki, I don't know. Cause I, I think the conventional wisdom has always been two straight you show as, uh, Ozeki, but I don't, I don't know. We need to look up if somebody's ever won a you show as Sekiwake and then a you show in their first tournament as Ozeki and see if they got an immediate promotion. Well, I think a lot of it would depend on, the fact that those three are consecutive, you know, that's, that's a big, that would, that would have been a big, a very big deal, but I'm trying to, I'm, I'm scrolling back here. Like the last time that somebody got, uh, it has been eight years since somebody got consecutive you show to get promoted to Yokozuna. So like Kakuryu and Kisuno Sato both kind of got like, you know, they had the rules bent, but I don't know. So I just did a quick query on fifth member of the podcast, Sumo DB. It turns out it has happened once where a Rikshi got a Yusho as a Sekiwake promoted to Ozeki, won the Yusho as an Ozeki. And that was Futabayama oh, no. in 1936. And he was not promoted to Yokozuna after that second straight Yusho. Uh, he did win a third Yusho in a row in his second Basho as Ozeki, and then he would become Yokozuna, where he won a fourth Yusho in a row. All of these are undefeated Yusho. Let's see how long this lasts. This must be the infamous his, run. His, yeah, the we infamous stumbled streak. upon the 69 win streak. So fifth Basho, nice. another undefeated Yusho, sixth Basho, nine and four. Yeah, those were before they had uh, completely standardized the length of the tournaments and the six tournaments a year and all that. So yeah, yep. he had an epic stre- an epic streak. And as soon as you said Futabayama, I'm like, well, crap. We're we're talking about like one of the best of all time. Yeah, I'm sure that he probably broke some patterns. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So in that scenario, his back to back Yusho as Sekiwake and Ozeki did not secure him the Yokozuna promotion. Hmm. Interesting spontaneous fun fact let's let's talk about those uh struggling yokozuna in this tournament so we had hakuho and we kind of talked about in the preview episode how hakuho may be a little bit in a late career decline so he finished 11 and 4 in this tournament he lost to the up-and-comers asanoyama and mitaki yumi he also lost to onosho for the second straight boss show and he lost to takada fuji uh so maybe this is why Hakuho keeps missing every other Basho. He needs that full two extra months rest between tournaments to get to Yusho winning level. Uh, but Flarek, what what do you think about Hakuho's performance and how that uh, bears moving forward? Uh, I don't know. It was uh, he, I think it's uh, a good thing that he stuck around the entire tournament. Uh, I think that means he wasn't injured at all, and I think he was feeling pretty good. He was a little dissatisfied with some of his wins. But I think uh, because of that, I think he's going to probably, as long as he can keep uh, healthy during the practice, he's hopefully going to come to the next tournament and kick some butt. So overall performance uh, for, for his standards, that's uh, it's kind of lacking. But I think I it's I think it's also a testament to just the talent of the youngsters that are kind of growing. So I think that, that really shined this Basho. Yeah, and it's it's not the first time we've seen Hakuho have a performance like this. There was 
I was looking it up earlier. There was a stretch where he was. Yeah. So in 2016 and 2017, uh, in July of 2016, he had a 10 and five record, missed the next tournament. And then the next two consecutive tournaments after that, he had 11 and four records. So, and then he missed the tournament after that, then came back one as Zen show, you show, but there was a five Basho stretch where Hakuho was not Hakuho. And so maybe we're just seeing that again, and he's going to maybe miss the next tournament, come back and win five straight Zen show, you show. Yeah, I would like to point out, even in this case where Hakuho is not Hakuho, he's still meeting the Yokozuna requirement for Kachikoshi. And oh, he's yeah. still getting 10 plus wins seemingly easily. <laughs> I don't think yeah. he, there were a few matches where it looked like he struggled, but still, for Hakuho to struggle, still getting 11 and 4, not looking at himself, the man's still amazing. <laughs> yeah. What about Kakuyu? He has now pulled out for the fourth Basho out of the past five Basho. He did manage to get Kachikoshi before that injury finally pushed him out. Uh, but Flarek did say in our preview episode that if Kakuyu pulls out of the tournament, it is time for him to retire. Flarek, <laughs> is it time for Kakuyu to retire? I think, unfortunately, it might be the time for him to... Uh, I did say that in the preview episode. There was a huge stakes coming into this one, so, and you know, if you're uh, if you're having a second, uh, I think if you're having a, <laughs> he's trying, he's trying I'm so trying to hard to words justify it. Justify because it, Come on. I'm trying to find words to just describe how I feel. So much he's so about emotional Cockney. because he's he's sad that he has to say this about Cockney. You, I know mm-hmm. it's so sad, but it's like you say, it's a uh, eventual. You don't you don't want to cry. Because it, uh, because it, it's over, you want to cry because it happened. And be Kakuryu, happy because it happened. I'm happy because it happened, and it's <laughs> sometimes it's time for Kakuryu to go. I uh, <laughs> I have an alternate theory. I, I have an alternate theory that Flarek really just wants to outrank Kakuryu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, I have like two two wins in a Basho under my belt. Uh, my permit yoke is in the promotion is just <laughs> i see this, this, this is what's going to his head here all right i just need uh need to take down hakuho then i'm good to go so <laughs> we'll have to find out who is the hakuho of this podcast who's racked up the most wins in the prediction series i want to say it's me but no nah, it's mm. not worth looking into who cares yeah we're good <laughs> So we mentioned it a little bit earlier, but Takakesho is Ozeki no Mo again. Uh, he seemingly re-aggravated that pectoral injury that he sustained in that Aki playoff match from Mitaki Yumi's second Yusho. And he pulled out on day 11 after six straight losses set him to his losing record. Uh, but there may be hope. He has already come back from the Ozeki Wake status once before where he was ranked as a Seki Wake, but got 10 wins and regained the rank of Ozeki. It's happened seven times in the past, including that one with Takakesho I mentioned uh, twice last year because Tochi Noshin also did it, uh, but he's looking to become just the second Rikshi to do it twice after Tochi Azuma did it twice in one calendar year in 2004. So after what we have seen from Takakesho in this tournament with his Injury issues, Jake. Do we think Takakesho is got it in him for ten wins in the next tournament, or is he ever going to be Ozeki again, even if he doesn't get the ten wins? I am upset with myself because I had this name saved somewhere yesterday, but he. I think that he's going to become the second person, and again, like I said, I I forgot who the other one was, but only one other person has ever dropped o- out of Ozeki lost the Ozeki Wake thing, and then become Ozeki a second time. Yep, That's, that was Tochi Azuma. Well, but did he get it back, like, the traditional, the hard way? Oh, or? oh, you mean doing it. Yeah, I think only one guy run. has... Yeah, I think only one guy has gotten Ozeki back the hard way. And yeah, yes. see if you can find that. But, like, I, I'm pretty sure that's only happened one time. And I, I think that uh, Takakesho is a, a very strong candidate to become the second person to do that. Again, we've mentioned in the past quite a bit about how young he is. Yes, he's had a, a rough time of it with injuries in the last year, year and a half, what have you. But like, I think he's still young and talented enough that he he's a very strong candidate to uh, very, very possibly, in my opinion, probably 
lose the Ozeki Wake status, but maybe, you know, another year or so, I, I would be I would not be shocked to see him come back. All right. So I did the research. There's actually a uh, r slash sumo post about this exact thing just a couple of days ago. That's probably where I heard it. Yeah. Ah. Posted by you slash slap yak five three one eight zero zero eight. That is and an awesome handle. Dang, that's yeah. the guy why I had to pick slap yak eight nine or whatever it was. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Five three one eight zero zero nine. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Ah, dang. I really wanted the eight. Uh, but the top comment on that from user Flaming Wuzzle twenty three, uh, the reason why I am Flaming Wuzzle twenty four, um, <laughs> he he responded with the answer, and that was Kaiketsu. His first run was a seven and eight record, twelve and three Yusho, eleven and four June Yusho, which was acceptable at that time, given there was only one Ozeki in the Basho in his 11 and four Basho. So he was an Ozeki for five Basho in 1975 and then dropped out. Uh, didn't even get a Kachi Koshi in his Basho as a Sekiwake. Uh, and then he put together an even stronger one run than his first one, a 14 and one Yusho, and then back to back 11 and four records to be promoted in 1977. Then he dropped out again after four Basho and retired at the start of 1979. So it looks like Kai Ketsu is the only guy who did it the hard way twice. And he didn't even really do it the hard way twice because one of the times he had a seven and eight record in there. Oh man. I, I mean, I think that was, yeah, that first, that first promotion, he definitely got a little bit of the luck of the bonds K on there, but uh, that is still a, a heck of a, a heck of a couple of years for that guy. Oh, definitely. So it sounds like you're on the train of not next time, but maybe someday for him. What about you, Flarek and Mac? Do you think he gets it next time, someday, or never again? Go ahead, Yokozuna Flarek. You're so you're so nice, Mac. Uh, I think he's going to. I think he'll probably get it next time, and I even if he doesn't get it next time, I think he can probably get it again. Uh, I think he's. Uh, I, I, of course, barring injury, I, I think he's a top sumo talent. I think with the older guys retiring, um, I think he's only going to get more consistent with his high finishes. So I think he can get a string of another three double digits done. And I think he can probably get 10 wins in the next Basho. As long as he can figure out whatever injury is plag- plaguing him this time. And it's for that reason that I'm going to say he's going to get it sometime. It may not be right away. I still think with him being so young, they still want to keep him healthy. Yes, he can bounce back from injuries. But again, I keep bringing this up. But as we've seen from his Oyakata, who is not afraid to say, no, I'm benching you. I think that shows real care, not only for uh, Takakesho's promising career, but also gives Takakesho a chance to kind of slow down a little bit, analyze what he's doing. And hopefully add more, you know, weapons to his arsenal. He's good as an Oshi guy. I love seeing him charge ahead. I don't like seeing him trip. So I want to see more from him. And I think that this, again, with his Oyakata and with taking a little bit of a step back, he will regain his Ozeki status and he'll come back with more fun tricks in his bag. All right, let's let's talk about the... Sekiwake that didn't win the Yusho, and that is Shodai. And uh, once again, I will refer to our preview episode and something Flarek said. Um, <laughs> I was about to say, like, okay, I, wait a minute. Flarek has been saying this every single show for about as long as I can remember. But please remind us. Uh, so, Flarek, I asked you, uh, Shodai, he. He got an eight and seven record as a Sekiwake in the previous tournament. Nine. You're uh, you're keeping keeping me to the shit I say during the preview. This is interesting <laughs> well, and different. <laughs> you said a lot of notable things on the preview, Flarek. Yeah, and normally it gets forgotten about by <laughs> by the review. Not <laughs> today. All right, what did I say? I definitely uh, meant it. I'll, so I, I'll I'll I will stand by my word of what I said. So I asked you if Shodai would get another winning record as a Sekiwake, and I I don't remember the exact uh, words, but I believe he just laughed in my face. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Flarek, Shodai That's did up. finish with another eight and seven record. So I have to ask you, where is your god now? Um, <laughs> it is a, a godless world, and <laughs> he, he currently dropped out of the tournament. Sumo, yeah. <laughs> Sumo is a harsh and unfair world and sometimes 
you just don't get what you, people just don't get what they deserve, which is uh, Chodai getting seven, uh, seven, eight losses or more in a tournament as Sekiwake. That is how I feel. I feel, <laughs> I feel alone. <laughs> I feel alone. Abandoned, like nothing matters anymore. Mm-hmm. Let's let's move on to the Komosubi, and we have Deddy Daisho, who for the eighth consecutive tournament finished with either an eight and seven or a seven and eight record. Uh, but for the first time, he got that eight and seven record in the San Yaku ranks. I ask this every single time because I never have anything to say about him. Does anybody have anything else to say about Daisho except he exists? He's consistent. Yeah. And I will hey, you cannot take that away from him. I can. And I'm about to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because Daisho is the most frustrating for me to watch. Um he's consistent <laughs> in the fact that his final tournament records are very, very consistent. Yet he's so inconsistent, like day to day. Um, so like it, he can he beat Asunoyama. That's pretty solid, right? Yeah. Um, he did not beat Asunoyama. Oh yeah, he did actually. Never mind, I'm dumb. Yeah. So maybe shut up when I'm talking. Um, and then he can, <laughs> <laughs> and then he can Flaric, go and get your Suke Bito in line <laughs> with violence. The yeah. microphone's about to come through the computer screen. Watch it. Yeah, uh, yeah, stop, yeah, so Suke can... Bito. You're doing just fine. Keep doing it. <laughs> Will do, uh, Yokozuna-san. Uh, so he can he can beat Asanoyama and lose to Ishiura in the same tournament, and nobody bats an eye because that's Daisho. Uh, the Daisho who shows up tournament to tournament is exactly the same, but the Daisho who shows up day to day, no idea, no idea whatsoever what the heck we're gonna get. <laughs> we just know how it's gonna end. Eight and seven, or seven we eight. know that whatever his previous day's result is, the odds are that it'll be something different the next day, and it just increases. Like, he had five losses in a row at one point, and so you knew you knew that three straight wins were coming. It it had to happen. The <laughs> it, it, It's easy to track, Jake. It's really actually easy to follow if you think about it. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Uh, and Okino Umi uh, did a little digging on him. He finished five and ten this tournament. Uh, really was never, never in it. Started off one and eight, uh, but he has continued his streak of never having a winning record while in the Sanyaku ranks. And this is despite him being a Sekiwake twice. So that means he he when he ever he got the Sekiwake rank, it wasn't because he was a Komosubi that did well and got up to Sekiwake. It just means when a, a Sekiwake did bad, but also the Komosubi did, and he was the next available guy to be dragged up. Yeah, I have right. a I have a pet theory about this, um, and I'm kind of thinking like Okinomi is a great example of this, but I think when you are ranked higher in sumo, it's harder to win matches. <laughs> huh. And I think we need Ooh. to do a little bit of digging here. There might yeah, be something I, I think to there that. might be something to it, but... Um, so that's know. why the Yokozuna are the best, because they win despite having the highest rank. Yeah, yeah, I, that's another pet theory of mine, is that the Yokozuna are the best at, yeah. at doing the sumo. Yep. <laughs> so I know, go on. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's a pet project of mine to do some research on this. Yeah, keep working on that, Jake. I'd be interested. Oh, hey, uh, by the way, who's who's next for a knock-knock joke? Hey, me, Mac. me, 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 me. Hey, Mac, knock-knock. Who's there? The coroner. The coroner who? Uh, please open up, sir. We have terrible news about Ikioi. <gasps> oh, oh no! <laughs> hey, Ryan. Like it. Yes, Jake. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not Ikioi. Not Ikioi. <laughs> no, that's the that's the end of the oh. joke. No. <laughs> God, you have no experience with knock, knock jokes. <laughs> All right, you can move on now. I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So let's talk about some people that were not in the Sanyaku ranks. And I want to start with uh, what should be a huge controversy. But since we're the only people who saw this match, we're going to have to have it out amongst ourselves. I know there's a lot of heated opinions on either side of this match and the outcome. So hopefully we don't start screaming and yelling at each other too much. But on day 14, the match between Terutsuyoshi and Kiribayama 
Uh, it was a couple of guys that had losing records, so Bruce didn't make a big fuss out of it in his write-up. But I'm 100% sure that Kiti Bayama was screwed in this match. That's uh, bull. So- I'll burn your house down. <laughs> Whoa, that's that's a that's a lot. I'm trying to keep it. I'm trying to keep it. <laughs> Contain <simple>. yourself. Okay. <laughs> Unlike the bento box I threw out of my hand when I saw this bullcrap. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Wait. Wh- what was this bullcrap? I don't think I saw all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Flarek was obviously going to the bathroom at this time. <laughs> but so Tedetsu Yoshi, it's one of those classic situations where one guy is falling down and simultaneously pushing another guy out of the ring. So Tedetsu Yoshi is falling and he's pushing Kiti Bayama out at the same time. Uh, Kiti Bayama feet was on the Tawara and it kind of did that classic Tochi Noshin thing where his heel is close to touching. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but Tedetsu Yoshi, when the time his heel like almost touched, it was pretty close to the time when Tedetsuyoshi definitely touched the ground. Uh, but what the Oyakata saw is, I believe they restarted the match. I can't remember off the top of my head. I oh, no, I, I got it been, in front of me here. Uh, okay, yeah, I've just been lost in such a haze of knowing for sure that mm-hmm. Kiribayama was screwed <laughs> that the details get messed up in my mind. So, no, no, so was I, it Kiribayama totally that. that uh, heel almost touched? Or it was yep. Kiribayama's heel almost touched, yep. Kiribayama's heel or Teretsu Yoshi hitting the clay. And it, it was super close. And yeah, I, I think... I think part of the reason this is probably going to get swept under the rug and we're probably the only people to spend more than 30 seconds on it it is because they both ended that day (laughs) five and nine, you know, yeah, three. Yeah, you had you you get of the side judges just coming up and questioning this. Well, here's here's the thing, though. Like, yes, yes, we did have people come up to, like, review it. And to me, this was it it goes back to our classic um, comparison of being uncultured Americans and having uncultured American sport theories here, you know, like it was one of those things where there was certainly no, how should I phrase it? The the standard of evidence, there was, there was not enough in an American sport context to overturn the call. And yet they did. And I think that's part of why that's part of, Part of why I think Ryan is a little upset here. Yeah, re- remind me who was declared the winner, and then was it overturned or did they rematch it? Uh, it was um, overturned, wasn't? It? I was picking up my bento box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the judges reversed the original call. The original call went in Kiribayama's favor, as it should have. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. So <laughs> the way that <laughs> the way that the uncultured swine of American sports would have handled this is the evidence is inconclusive. Therefore, we should go with the call on the field. And yet this was this was uh, I don't think it's the first time we've seen this where they they overturned on what we feel was probably just inconclusive evidence. So, yeah, I mean, that that happens. That's not completely unheard of by any means. But I think that's probably why Ryan is up in arms about it. His foot was never down. Look at the replays. There's clearly at least a millimeter, if not two, between his foot and the grains of sand outside of the dojo. How can you overturn it when his foot never touched? I feel okay. like the grains of sand are probably around two millimeters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he was two millimeters above those grains of sand, Jake. You you, you might need to get your eyes checked, Ryan, because now I, I remember this match now. I had, I don't know about you, but I had my opera kind of binoculars out, taking a look at that <laughs> at the time. And like that, the foot totally touched. They, they okay. made the right call. And I, I do just, remember I, Flarek like his his uh, lowering his opera glasses and going, I declare. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I don't give a crap about your opera glasses. I recorded it with my phone. Mm-hmm. And remember, we're in the highest portions of the uh, Kokuki Con. So we had the clearly the best vantage point. I recorded it on my phone. I zoomed in as far as possible. Clear <laughs> as day, his foot did not touch the ground. I don't know what you were seeing, Flarek. Did you declare? <laughs> I didn't. Shoot. I bet that was yeah. it. Yep. Did not declare. Mm-hmm. Damn it. Yeah, you should have made some more noise in the in the arena at the time. Maybe then the uh, the fifth judge. Then I would have gotten thrown out. That was judge just running out, going, (laughs) "That was bull!" and just sprinting up. (laughs) But yeah, judge the the sixth judge in the replay booth. Because remember, the guys on the floor, those judges don't get to watch replays. They can only talk about it and get the opinion of the guy, the single guy in the replay booth. So we can we can. And also, people, the, and also people and also people yelling nonsense from the crowd. 
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> that absolutely can influence the the judges when a quarter of the entire audience is screaming at them. <laughs> so I, I think I know what, what went wrong here. So the only people allowed in the building were the Gyoji, the Rikshi, and the Shimpan, and us to view it. There was nobody in the video replay booth to tell them that his foot clearly did not touch. Oh, you the think ground. they were faking it? <gasps> they had to be. Nobody was in there. It's a sham. I, I don't know. I think I think at the time, I think what we what what we kind of decided was we would have felt best if they had just done a rematch. But yeah, they didn't go that route. Ridiculous. Yeah. But if it was left to us, we'd probably like rematch everything. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we would rematch a lot. Here's what we'll do. I that was so cool. Let's do it. We again. will post a poll on Twitter. Did Kitty Bayama was Kitty Bayama screwed? Yes, no. And we'll let the fans decide. And the fans only evidence will be our podcast and Tachi's write up that is also inconclusive. Correct. <laughs> they like will that. know best. <laughs> the will of the people will not be denied. People power. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Let's talk for a moment, just a brief moment, about Chio Taidu and Nishkigi, both picking up 11 wins this tournament. So Chio Taidu, that is tied for his best record in the Makauchi division. Uh, the first time that it happened was back in November of 2013, which reminds me that Chio Taidu has been around since 2013. <laughs> he does, he does, he's like in his low 30s, but he doesn't seem that mm. old to me for some reason. And Nishkigi, this is actually his first time ever getting to the 11 win mark in the Makauchi division and only the third 10 win and only his third 10 win Basho in the top division. Uh, So kind of breakout performances for both of these guys. Expect them to get uh, pretty decent promotions up the Bonske and then have the exact opposite outcome (laughs) in the next tournament. Bingo. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about some younger guys up and coming that were in the joy. We had Yutakayama, Takanosho, and Onosho, all guys that got an eight and seven record in the joy. And if my Bonske predicting abilities are correct, which they typically are, uh, Yutakayama should Shut be up. making his Sanyaku debut in the next Basho. Uh, so, what do you guys think of that trio of young Rikshi all doing well? Uh, Takanosho, he. Started off hot, got that outstanding performance prize. Oh, no show beat Hakaho for the second straight Basho. Flarek, which out of those three are you most impressed with and think has the most potential in the future? Most impressed with? That's that's an interesting thing. I I think I'm I was in, when I was initially think of those three, I was thinking of Yutakiyama because when I remember just like I think it was a year ago or so, like he was kind of a joy mainstay and he was getting some quality wins against some like very top Rikshi, which I which I thought was great. But then something definitely happened to him before he uh, kind of fell down into the Bonzake. So I, I imagine he has some injury of sorts, and now he, he's probably working his way back up. Um, I'm always impressed with people who can uh, kind of come back from injury and get back up to the form where they're uh, competing at the very top. So I think of those, I am kind of really liking you, Takayama. How about you, Mac? I imagine that you're along the same mindset as Flarek there. Uh, actually, yeah, no, anytime someone, yeah, you Takayama in this case, no offense to Takanosho or Onosho, who both did well. It's that much more impressive when you're coming back from injuries and fighting your way back to the top. We've seen it with Tochi Notion. Uh, we've seen it with Takayasu, though I'm still waiting for Takayasu to have that burst back up. We're not quite there yet, but no, you Takayama, well done. Yeah, Takanosho had a very good performance, uh, but I just got to see more from that guy before I really kind of start consider him, considering him to be a top talent. For coming into future yeah i would say for me takanosho would get my most impressed with this tournament just because this was his first time up in the joy and kind of he got some big wins i believe he also beat uh he beat mitakiyumi he beat the yusho winner uh so that yeah. he beat shodai he beat daisho he beat kakuryu before kakuryu was looking like crap yep uh so he's the most impressive to me this tournament but moving forward i'd probably agree with you guys yutakayama i think has the most going for him for future potential. Yeah, he's got a June U show. Yeah. He, Dang. He finished 12 and 3 in Nagoya 2018 when Mitaki Yumi won his first U show. Jesus, and he, right. He's you an encyclopedia like, of just knowledge, disgusting man, with of sumo knowledge. He, God, what rank? Dang. What rank was he? Oh, God. He was like nine, I want to say. Not I'm going to go. <laughs> 
and and east or west oh i don't remember i'm gonna say west ah, God. <laughs> <laughs> and i hell? also know that he beat me takiyumi on the final day to get that 12th win and what was an amazing match i remember that match being fantastic but yeah screw you guys this is why oh I won God. a Stumo trivia contest. Whoa, whoa. Hey, wait, screw us. Like, Flair and I were in full support of this. <laughs> All right, screw Jay. Jesus. Okay, there we go. <laughs> no, 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 screw you, Ryan. Uh, <laughs> here, uh, I'll, I'll accept that under uh, two conditions here. First off, Ryan, who won Super Bowl 49? Super Bowl 49. I, I don't know it off top. So 50 was the Broncos. The year before that, it was probably the Patriots. Okay. Uh, what about, uh, WrestleMania 13, WrestleMania 13. That was, uh, the year before that, the year after that was, it was, uh, undertaker. I want to say like psycho Sid. Actually, I didn't even look it up. I figured you'd say it confidently. I'm pretty sure it was undertaker or psycho Sid or Sid vicious, whatever Sid he was going by at the time. All right. Let's see. Where's the, where's the match card? Oh, Jesus Christ. Yep. Obviously you got yeah. it. All right, fine. I will accept any insult you toss my way. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's let's move on away from my genius and greatness. Uh, You're a monster. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, poor wee baby Enho getting oh, no. put in timeout this tournament. Uh, five and ten record. Uh, looks like he could have been injured going into this tournament. Uh, it's kind of what Jake has been saying this whole time that this is he 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 hit his peak. And maybe he exceeded his peak, like Ishiura, who had that 10 and 5 record when he started, got up to Maigashira 8, and it's taken him like two or three years to get back up to that rank again, just overperforming at the beginning. Um, I don't know that there's a whole lot of commentary to be said about Enho. Hopefully he gets right uh, and he gets back to his 8 and 7, 9 and 6 ways in the next tournament and kind of recovers from this. But uh, another little comeback to reality for Enho, uh, just showing that he he can't, he can't make it all the way up to the Sanyaku division uh, or the Sanyaku ranks in like his first run up the Bonske, especially at his size. We can always say that Enho must see television. Oh yeah. Always, always fun matches. But yeah, I think the, the third, the third act of this particular tournament, you could tell that he wasn't doing that great. He actually lost his last four. So yeah. And what did you guys think of his match with Yutake Yama on this one? It was just another one of those where nobody moves at the frickin' Tachi Eye. <laughs> <laughs> the reactive sumo. Sometimes it works, but one of you has to be I'm active. just upset that because of their records, they may move further apart and not have another match. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the only downside, because like it's the same, the same story each time. It just depends on whether after that silly Tachi Eye, Yutakiyama can get a hold of him or not. Yeah. This time he did one yep but it was still really funny. yeah Let, let's go through i don't know why this is the first time it's really struck me uh but we had four former ozeki all ranked migashira 11 or worse in this tournament so let's talk about how they did Ooh. uh former ozeki koto shokiku with one yusho to his name had kind of a little bit of a resurgent basho for him getting a 10 and 5 record for the first time in over a year i believe uh, I don't know that there's really any hope that this means anything for him. I don't think any of us think he's getting back to Ozeki, even the Sanyaku ranks, but nice to see the hug and chug uh, come back for at least one tournament. Uh, the bump, the bump, 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 can, bump, bump. can I interrupt for a topical knock, knock joke? Oh, always. I believe it's Yokozuna Flarek's turn. Hey, Yokozuna Flarek, knock, knock. Yes. Sukibito, Sukibito Jake. Who's there? Interrupting Terra no Fuji. Interrupting Terra no Injury. Fuji. Who? Oh. Yeah. Terra no Fuji made his comeback to the Makauchi division for the first time since, I believe, March of 2018. And he never was really able to get out of the starting gates. He started off 0 and 7, clearly didn't look right. Uh, and he pulled out after, actually, started 0 and 6, then pulled out and was Kyujo for the rest of the tournament. So he didn't even get a single win in his return to the Makauchi division. We'll be dropping back down to the rank of Jurio. Um, 
Another guy that's not looking good in his descent from Ozeki is Tochi Noshin with a four and eleven record at the Magashira eleven rank. Gonna not good. Not yeah, good. it potential to go down into Jurio. It doesn't look like he will based on who can come up and who else needs to go down to the Jurio ranks, but He's going to be right at the very bottom of the Bonske in the next tournament. Uh, and Jake, I'm, I'm sorry that you were once again in the building to see this happen, but Takayasu, he started off really well. He ended up getting to eight wins, but on day, I believe it was 13, he fought against Toku Shoryu and his knee did not like that match uh he was yeah he we had the the comically large wheelchair had to come out for him yeah it was it was rough but it was but i was uh i was serenading him from the stands this time and he was able you know he was able to hear me this particular injury he looked a lot more comforted than the last one yes yes he he had the the single solitary tear and he put his hand on his heart and he just pointed up to the ceiling while i was trying to play some rush to him because i know rush is always the best the best uh the best band for healing yeah i was gonna ask uh what did you serenade him with but rush i started with tom sawyer but everybody knows tom sawyer is like the most stereotypical rush song you know dumb (laughs) rush song so like as soon as it like that that didn't stop him from call you know yelling out and grabbing his knees so i switched to the obviously <laughs> best rush song which we all know is spirit of radio surprised yes. you didn't start acapella singing yyz at him that's what i was thinking sorry yyz yyz it's like yyz yeah come on man <laughs> freaking amateur hour over here Takish, uh takiyasu though uh yeah i i don't know if, if this is the exact same injury from march that that hasn't been made clear but it was another lower body injury that very well could have been the exact same thing that he wasn't ready to come back from. That That's kind of what I suspect it was. I think he was able to fight through it in the beginning part of the tournament. Maybe the lack of intense training didn't really aggravate it, but as he was going through the days, the matches accumulated, the wear and tear on his knee accumulated, just got weaker, and uh, then snap on day 13 against Tokushoryu. Let's move on to happier things. Um, Wakataka Kage, he got nine wins in his first full Basho in Makauchi, nine and six record. Uh, should we be worried about him? Is there is there something wrong? Uh, this is not his unbeatable form that we've come to know and love from Wakataka Kage. No, he's fine. Just let him be. He's amazing. He's still the champ. But right now, he's going through some growing pains. This was his first full Basho in Makauchi. Of course, his greatness has to be recognized by everybody above him. Give him time. My hypothesis is that he threw a couple matches because he wants more time to train and mature rather than just rocketing up to the top and, and facing those hard matches immediately. He just wants to move up gradually, and I, I can respect that. Yeah, I my, my guess more than anything is that he didn't want to hurt everybody's feelings um, and just kind of just kind of threw them a couple of pity losses. He... He doesn't want to show his superior dominance uh, so soon. Hakuho is still around. Hakuho might not like it if somebody else comes in and wins six straight Bashos with Zensho Yushos. Hakuho won't take that kindly. So he kind of wants to avoid the wrath of that. Just try to stay a little under wraps at this point until it makes more sense for somebody to rattle off six straight championships. So Wakataka Kage, I, I am now comforted and found reasons to believe why he lost this tournament. Uh, if it continues into the next tournament, though, I'm going to have real questions on to it. And we'll his, revisit the issue. <laughs> I, I, I will have real questions on if his 4-0 and start in his first Makauchi tournament was uh, just a uh, small sample size, and we can't really take a whole lot from that. But I, re- oh, no, I no, refuse no. to acknowledge it at that point, at this point. Uh, somebody that was making his Makuuchi debut is Koto Shoho getting nine and six record, uh, 20 year old. So that's pretty good for his Makuuchi debut at only 20 years old. He did fall just short of earning a special prize. Uh, it is customary for uh, somebody making his Makuuchi debut. If they get 10 wins or more to get a Kanto show fighting spirit prize, he was nine and five going into day 15, went up against my boy Hokuto Fuji also finished nine and six. Uh, but 
he lost to Hokuto Fuji, uh, so he did not get that special prize. I'll turn this over to Flarek. Uh, Tokushoryu ended up with a 10 and 5 tournament, somewhat validating uh, his Yusho win uh, before, showing that he can get double digit wins again in the Makauchi division. Uh, Bruce did say if Tokushoryu can manage to rack up his second Yusho in one year, then 2020 needs to go into the timeout <laughs> corner and think about what it's done. <laughs> I think. We're already at that point with 2020. <laughs> what was your first yep. hint? I'm, I'm just going to say that. I think aside from Sumo, it's very fair to say that 2020 needs to think go about what it's out. done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but no, to assure you, I, I don't think he needs to validate anything. He already proved himself with that. You should win right there. Uh, but as we can see, he still has some fight left within him. Uh, maybe he'll go the, the Hanakaze route and go another like 15 years <laughs> or so. Keep Sumo until he's 50. Get that Yusha when he's uh, 40, 40 plus years old. I can only hope. Like uh, You never know with Tokushoryu. He's uh, just a bundle of joy and full of surprises. <laughs> yeah, he could have become, uh, I don't know, depending on how the Bonske worked out. He was He was technically in the hunt until the mm. very final days here. And if he did mm. win a second Yusho... And based on the way the Bonds case shook out, if he didn't quite make it to Komosubi, it would have been really funny because that would have been that would have made him the only multi Yusho winner to never reach the Sanyaku division. Oh. <laughs> and there is an argument to be made that he might not have made it to the Komosubi rank. Yeah, yeah. It all depends on on, you know, the Bonds K math, but I think coming into the last couple days of this tournament, it was still mathematically possible for him to hit that weird ass record. Yeah. Thankfully, we don't have to talk about that scenario. Um, so actually kind of a surprise at the end of the, Oh, sorry. Before I get to this, is there anybody else that people want to uh, make mention of or talk about before we move on to other things? Hey, Ryan, knock, knock. Who's there? Koto. Koto who? I don't know. There are a billion of us. <laughs> <laughs> it actually worked. I mean, it's true. Uh, they're in the Sato Gatake Bay, and I believe there's over like 40 Rikshi in that Bay. And I think 40 billion, yes. Kotos. And I'm pretty sure they're all Kotos, too. Or they're going to have their name changed to Koto. So, yeah, they're all going to be Koto. <laughs> your, your joke was very on point. Koto Ichi, Koto Ni, Koto San. <laughs> Stan. Yes. <laughs> Was there anybody else anybody wanted to bring up? Ah, hell, let's do the full Koto real quick. Koto Yuki with six and nine. You're welcome, Jake. Oh, nice. Koto Waco, five and ten. Uh, Koto Shoho, we talked about. Koto Shogiku, we talked about. Koto Nowaka in his second Makauchi Basho got eight and seven. Eh, uh, good on so, him. So, mixed bag. Easy. Mixed bag for the Kotos this one. Hey, uh, uh, Yokozuna Flarek, knock, knock. Who is there? Ishiura in the joy. Ishiura in the joy who? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like, is that just, does that count? <laughs> I'm not sure if that counts. <laughs> Meaning he'll never make it to the Your joy. Your Yokozuna demands one more knock-knock joke be written before the end of the episode, Jake. I, I have one more, but it's my favorite one, so I was saving it until we talked about how how badly I lost in all the stats and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could save that one for later, but we need an additional one before the end because Flarek has rejected that one. <laughs> Why? Why'd you reject that one? O only like, like two or three of these have actually followed traditional knock knock jo knock knock joke format. <laughs> Yo, you does not need to ex explain myself. <laughs> <laughs> Speak to me, Ryan. Wow, Yo, was that you, Ryan? <laughs> Do you dare question his greatness, Yokozuna Flarek? <laughs> How dare you talk back to a man of his stature? <laughs> Do you even know who you are? Do you know how low you are on the totem pole? There, there's the top of the totem pole. There's the bottom of the totem pole that's right on top of the dirt. Then there's the bottom of the totem pole that's below the dirt. Then there's like all the worms and crap that's below the bottom of the totem pole. Then there's like the dead bodies that we don't talk about anymore. We don't know how they got there, but they're there. And then there's you underneath all of that. That's how low you are. You talk to the top of the totem pole. The top of the totem pole can't even hear your ass all the way down there. How dare you? Well, luckily for the rest of the world, Ryan's transcendent knowledge is limited specifically to sports and nothing else. 
because this is the true of the totem pole is the most respected position and those at the top where nobody can really see them are much lower on the social ladder by being higher on the totem but, pole. See, this this what? is the kind of bullcrap I would expect from somebody whose head has been buried in the ground for so long, just making up facts to try to make himself feel better. Obviously, the person at the top is the most respected because they get a crap and their crap falls on everybody else. So yeah, that's why we flaring. respect birds so much, right? <laughs> <laughs> just just watch just watch yourself. Ryan's going to just fly over you there. Speak to Wait, you a cleric still, like that. He's just going to hab on the roof and just be like, come on, Jake. I don't know. Ryan's sucking up for some reason. I'm not sure what it is yet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> In bird culture, you would be considered a dick, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> You're an expert on bird culture, aren't you? Indeed. Uh, it's in pronounced avians. <laughs> uh. There's a, uh, yeah, I, I think I told you guys there's like this bird game uh uh board game that's out there and so like there's a there's a group a chat bird board game or just yeah, board game were you correcting uh, yourself or were I, you I elaborating it's a board <laughs> game before you word. question yokozuna flare shut Jake. the hell up ryan let him talk <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like it's like a machine building board game of where you try to build a machine where you get stuff but it's like peppered full of bird facts and like <laughs> There's a group chat that that was for finding games, but a lot of people have kind of left the city. But there was this constant amount of bird facts that are just always filled into the group chat, and it always makes me giggle. Yeah, uh, like you were exactly saying, exactly the kind of niche in the internet that I would expect Flerick to find <laughs> and and educate the rest of us about. <laughs> yeah, it was accidental. Like just like I think a month ago, there was like this one bird that uh, evaded fo- uh, photographers like for like ages like they never had a picture of this guy but then like a like a couple weeks ago they finally got a picture of him and it was like huge in the bird news community apparently <laughs> when you say they finally got a picture of this guy i just imagine that there's some crazy guy that's been running around central park with like cardboard boxes formed as bird wings <laughs> and he just always slips, he just always slips into the bushes before people are able to take a photograph of him but they finally got him out in the open and caught a picture of the crazy what do you think sasquatch learned it from right <laughs> here we got keith we got him <laughs> Yeah, you have to have the right dance, the right the right song to be able to get those elusive birds. Yes. Okay, Flarek, Flarek, uh speaking of birds, Who? I got a bon- I got the bonus knock knock joke Who? already figured out for you. Who? Who am I? Yoko's in a Flarek. Right you are. Continue. So Yoko's in a Flarek, knock knock. Who's there? Kota Yuki says. Kota Yuki Kota Yuki says what? Who? <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> How Definitely. do you mess up a knock knock joke? <laughs> because it doesn't make sense to say who. He's a Yokozuna. He does what he wants. It's literally like three year old jokes 101. <laughs> it's, it. It, the three year olds have terrible grammar. Kotoyuki, Kotoyuki says who? Says yeah, what that's, who? That's, a, that's the whole joke. That's it. Like he, he, he does the dumb owl hoot. Yeah. Oh, who? Yeah, oh. Like oh. <laughs> okay. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> Good God. I had such high hopes for this list of knock knock jokes. Wow. Oh, was that your crowning jewel? No, 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 no. I still have okay. one. made up on the okay. spot. I'll, I'll right. give you I'll give you props for making that up on the spot then. That was that pretty was your bonus. That was clever. That was that much was better bonus. than and then whatever after the, the break I got was. my one more. I'm okay. taking the I'm taking the bus out of park. We're putting it back in drive and we're getting this thing back on the road, people. Over uh, my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we will be driving over it multiple times, yes. Ikioi, uh, Ikioi. <laughs> so we we actually got a fun little surprise at the end of the tournament. Um, we were looking to leave the Koguki Con, but then the head of the JSA himself, Hakaku, uh, he gave us the results of the Jurio Basho. So they held the Jurio Basho, but we weren't able to watch it. Uh, but he had scribbled out quickly on a napkin uh, the results of Jurio. Because as as I understand what he told me, we didn't have a translator with us, but he was talking a lot. I'm pretty sure we did go way back. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was saying, Ryan, I know you need the results of Jurio to better predict the Bonske. Those are my favorite episodes of the podcast. Uh, so I want to make sure you have the most information to predict, predict the next Bonske. So here I, I wrote out the results for you real quick on the snapkin. Here you go. Oh, blessed one. 
<laughs> oh, blessed one. Oh, blessed one. He, that, I don't that was think just my understanding that. of what he said. Like I said, we didn't have yeah. a translator. I don't speak a lick of Japanese, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Hmm. I, I, as someone who uh, most rudimentary elementary of Japanese, I can 100% uh, confirm that's what he said. Thank you, Yokozuna Flair. <laughs> for it secondhand. <laughs> <laughs> so the notable results from this, uh, our Yusha winner was Kyoku Taisei at, I believe he was Juryo 6. Um, he had a 12-3 and three record. Uh, some names that you might know, Ichi Nojo and Hoshoryu, uh, both of them finished with a 9-6 and six record. And then some recent guys that were in the Makauchi division, just how they did. Meisei was 9-6. and six. He'll be making it back up into the Makauchi division. Chiyoshoma was 5-10. and ten. Tochi Ozan was 7-8. and eight, And Azumaru was also 5-10. and ten. Um, No real reason to go into any more of the results from Juryo. We didn't see it. Uh, but I take Hakaku at his word. That was Hakaku, right? I don't know. Yeah, let's just uh, move along. <laughs> I think yeah. so. Maybe. Uh, let's... <clears throat> <laughs> so with all that being said we will blessedly take a quick break and when we come back we will talk about our prediction series and get jake's crowning achievement of a knock knock joke hey 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 yeah, yeah. it's the not so not so basho not so basho basho yeah, yeah, yeah. not so not so basho Welcome back, and let's dive right into the prediction series results. As you may have learned from the first portion of this podcast, Flarick won uh, yeah. the prediction series. Oh, crap. Uh, and he set a new high score for our new format where we select one champ and one chump because his champ, well, Flarick, why don't you tell the people about it? So Mitaki Yumi is uh, pretty good at sumo. Uh, he uh, kind of snuck in there. I thought I was in trouble when I saw Ishiro kind of doing so well. But I knew Ishiro, uh, not Ishiro, but Mitaki Yumi was probably going to have a pretty good pretty good showing. And like I was super, super pleased to see him clinched out at the end. Uh, you know, I always believe that the the theory that warmer months equal better Mitaki Yumi. Uh, <laughs> s- someone said in, uh, on a, some sumo podcast somewhere. I forget who. Uh, so... <laughs> That did pretty well. Mitaki Yumi, uh, and he, he totally wasn't my fourth choice after all the Yokozuna and Nozeki were taken. <laughs> <laughs> and as you may have concluded, Jake was our loser. Jake, tell everybody about your shame. Rather not. Um, but no, I, I picked um, I picked Kakuyu as my champ, and I picked Kagayaki as my chump. Uh, as is tradition, by the way. Kagayaki yes. tends to be my chump a lot. Mm. Um, but, uh, that one was an okay pick, but then I picked Kakuyu as my champ. He got, he got eight wins before he pulled out, which was just bad. I, I, yep. was, I, I, it, it was just bad. Um, I mean, for a champ pick, I, you really got to get somebody that does more than like the bare minimum. Uh, on the other hand, I would like to. Uh, I, I would like to say you're welcome to everyone on the face of the earth that isn't Mac, uh, because <laughs> late late in the second week when it appeared, uh, when it became obvious that uh, Takanosho was not a great pick for a chump, Mac also had Asanoyama as a champ, and he had kind of a, a, a late resurgence to allow him to get that Junyu show, and those extra points from the Junyu show, and... Uh, and uh, some some extra stuff going on with Takanosho, I squeaked by at the last second to make sure that nobody had to be subjected to hours and hours of Mac's awful knock knock jokes. My pages, my pages are going to waste. Hey Mac, uh, I'm I, I would I would love to hear one. I was going to say one or two, but no one. I would like to hear one of the knock knock jokes that you had written, just just as a, a slight show of mercy. Uh, if if Yokozuna Flarek will allow it. I will allow it. You are a fair and just ruler, Yokozuna Flarek. Why you are Suki Bido, Jake? <laughs> I gotta find the right one here. <laughs> okay, all right, I got one here. Yokozuna Flarek. Knock, knock. Who is there? Baby Owl. Hold on. Baby Owl. <laughs> can, can we rethink this? 
<laughs> Baby Al who? Baby Al, see you in the ring. Oh, I didn't go where I thought, but... <laughs> well played. Thank you. You wanted my best? Gosh. Boom. Now, that was gold, and I got pages of this that I won't get to share. I had the worst chump. I was going to bring this up if nobody else brought it up. Nobody else did, so I'm bringing it up now. I had the worst chump pick. I got one point. I thought... I don't. This kn- is a lot. I don't know why I've you sound like you're this. bragging right now. <laughs> I, no, because I know what I know how to win. In this case, I didn't want to win. I wanted to punish everybody. No, I'm talking out my ass. I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had, I, I think so. Uh, you got. I think the worst chump. Uh, you get more point. The worst they do at sumo, you get more points. Yeah. The more and, points. <laughs> so, if you only got one point, that means you're you're chump did okay at sumo or he did really good at sumo it doesn't mean uh, yeah, that you kicked the worst guy as your chump because that would go to ryan you you made the most bad choice of a chump i think is how yeah you okay yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go there you go <laughs> the the oh, chump Lord. i chose not only got a kachikoshi but oh. got a kinboshi and a special prize yeah that was that was pretty good rough so uh my final knock knock joke here um I, I believe I, I know we were rotating, but I believe the honor should still go to Yokozuna Flaric here. Uh mm. God among men and uh and and bringer of, of peace and joy to the world. And bird facts. And bird facts to the world. Um so Flaric, knock knock. Who is there? Shimpon. Shimpon who? Oh, wait, no, hold on. I'm sorry. I screwed uh hold on a second. Okay, no, you start. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh knock knock. Who's there? Uh, Shimpon. Uh, okay, hold on. I think we need to start over here. Uh, geez, I got it. You know what? Either way, the point is Kaisei wins. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was kind of confused like where that was going, but you know, the ending was... I like the ending. It really resonated with me. I was assuming he was going to work a Mata joke in there, but no, that was, <laughs> that was good. It, it turns out Jake wasn't actually the loser completely in this tournament he was a loser amongst the four of us which is a remarkable accomplishment which he should completely be derided for uh it's <laughs> a terrible place to be to be By the worst means, among yes. us for exactly. uh but even worse than us the fans they selected takakesho as their champ woof and shodai as their chump but actually they did too bad yeah, that's okay. as far as the chumps go uh but the fans finished in dead last. And so that means that they deserve to be punished as well. And I feel like they have been punished throughout the entirety of this episode, just by virtue of listening to this episode. Uh, but we also tasked them with coming up of some knock, knock jokes of their own. So I will read off a couple of them. Uh, so Mac knock, knock. Who's there? A bee. A bee who? A bee Masatora. Hey! Hey! <laughs> I like that. That's I like, a good that's one. good. Yeah. All right. Let's go with Jake. Knock knock. Who's there? Basho. Basho who? Basho was rigged by GSB. Oh. <laughs> I mean, literally, yeah, we did do the rigging for it. I mean, that was <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Or I'm sorry, sh- crap. We're still in the simulation. Never mind. Yeah, how how <laughs> dare they say? How dare you? Strike, strike that last bit from the record. <laughs> yep. Flaric, knock knock. Who's there? Karaoke. Karaoke who? Karaoke remote go knock knock. Oh. <laughs> All right, that was uh, uh, violence that was and sumo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I I should be crediting all of these. So that last one was from at Undisputed DMG. Uh, the rigging the Basho one, uh, which I don't know how he knew we were setting that up, as Jake mentioned. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. But that was at JWT six five seven seven, and the Abi joke was from the Tachi I blog. Yeah, they got some uh, knock-knock joke uh, skills. They do. Uh, so this one's from at Jennifer Stolzer. Jake, knock-knock. Who's there? Takakesho. Takakesho who? Exactly. Ouch. Takakesho. Oh. Kind of in a similar vein to one that you had. I don't know what you're talking about. 
<laughs> Every knock knock joke is its own unique, beautiful animal. <laughs> All right, the ones that Mac writes. <laughs> oh. Speaking of Mac, knock not nah, sorry. <laughs> I was halfway between saying knock knock and saying this one is from. So this one is from at Alex from Paphos. So Mac, hmm. knock knock. Who's there? Tori. Tori who? Tori Naoshi. Knock knock. Who's there? It'll just keep going like that forever. So no, I'm going to cut it off. No, Aren't you there? glad I didn't say rematch? <laughs> <laughs> All right. And our last one from at Beast Monarch, Flaric, knock, knock. Who's there? Kodo Show Geek. Kodo Show Geek. Cool. <laughs> Should not have gone to Flaric for the one that required pronunciation. <laughs> Did I not say it right? Code the show geek who? <laughs> no, he got it. No, he got it. I think you need to enunciate more. <laughs> Co- to- show geek who? <laughs> yep, you nailed it. Perfect. So thank you for the fans for participating uh... in the punishment. I hope you all feel terrible and awful about yourselves in how bad you did. Also, this might be a wake up call for more of you to participate it when we ask for your champ and chump selection. And maybe you won't get stuck with crappy ones. Calling the fans out. <gasps> Always a smart move to do to alienate Indeed. the fan base. <laughs> Let's move on to some of our fans bold predictions yeah, results speaking of calling out uh, the fans let's call out the fans again <laughs> yeah so we didn't get too many on this one i'm assuming since people knew coming into it they weren't going to be seeing the tournament uh, we didn't get as many responses but that's okay uh we still got a few so at sumo k show uh said that tamawashi injures at least two people well ikio he got for damn sure uh, we know that. And possibly Terutsuyoshi as well. Terutsuyoshi didn't do good, and he beat both of those guys with the Kota Nage of Doom. So good job at Sumo Keisho. Uh At Ripperu17 said Terutsuyoshi with Shitate Hineri, which is just a obscure uh, Kimarite. And that was that was the entirety of his prediction. Just Terutsuyoshi with Shitate Hineri. Uh, but it turns out Ishiura did win against Kaisei on day five with Shitate Hineri. They're both small guys, so close enough. We'll give it to them. That's the uh, the twist down move. So it's like an underarm grip. That's the Shita. Um, but then instead of just like tossing them flat on the ground, it's it's kind of just like a, a, a momentum shift and tipping somebody over rather than like a full-on judo throw. Something mm-hmm. that uh, uh, smaller guys can do a lot easier because, well, not easier, but something that you see more commonly, I guess, in smaller guys, because the smaller guys aren't really like, you know, doing full on hip tosses or anything. And our final one from at Darren underscore liner uh, said Tochi no Shin Kachi Koshi. Uh, no, <laughs> not even close. <laughs> no, buddy. Oh, dear. we're all we're all sad, Mis- too. Mr. But... Tochi no Shin no here. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well have not been. Indeed. Uh, so let, let's move on now to the GSB Awards. And this first one is we're going to revive an old one that we used to give out all the time. That's the Boom Headshot Award uh, that goes to Shohozan for decapitating that one get one guy on on the one day. Jake knows what I'm talking about. Chiyomaru, day nine. Shohozan ended his uh, his his spinal health. <laughs> With a massive uppercut. Next is uh, another another original, uh, an OG GSB award, the Benny Hill Award. Haven't awarded this one in a while, but this absolutely is a uh, is deserved by the Shimpan in the Ishiura Kaisei match, where they had a mono e causing a rematch, and then they had another mono e, and I think they overturned that call or something like that. It was yeah. it was just ridiculous. Next up, we have the Dead Man Award, and this is not just because Undertaker is my favorite wrestler of all time, but this goes to Ikioi, who is also another one of the wrestlers that are near and dear to my heart, whose actual heart was literally on the ring at one point, but still <laughs> managed to pull out a couple wins, including one beating a guy with his own arms. Yeah, that was uh, a <clears throat> well done, Ikioi. Uh, next up, we have the Close But No Cigar Award. That goes to Ishiura. Now, he had us all going. He made us all think, yeah. He can actually make, you know, he could pull this off, you know. 
Uh, maybe get those 12 wins like Mac was hoping for, but uh, no, he fell short 10 and 5, but hey, still respectable. Well done, but not quite. Uh, next up, we have the Hot Shot Award. That goes to Taka No Show. It came out firing on all cylinders, ended with an 8 and 7, got a Kimboshi, got a special prize. Great record. Not bad for a new guy to Makauchi and the Joy. Next up, we have the Solid Gold Performance-ish Award. That goes to Takara Fuji for getting that solid gold to Kinboshi out of two possible Kinboshi performances. Rest of the tournament, not so great, but hey, way to go on those Kinboshi. And the final one will be the Match of the Basho Award. And really just comes down to two matches for us. Uh, the Ishiura versus Kaisei debacle. Uh, it kind of <laughs> exemplifies the Gyojiing and Shimpaning we saw this tournament. There were quite a few Monoese, uh, a lot more Tori Naoshis, I think, than we're used to seeing. Uh, so maybe they just didn't care since they knew nobody was really going to be seeing the matches or holding them accountable. Well, we're hard to live it. <laughs> you want to try that one again <laughs> well we're holding you accountable yeah. now Gyoji and Shimpan. <laughs> we saw we know do better next time uh, but I think the one that we're going to actually crown as the match of the Basho was the day 9 matchup of Asanoyama versus Mitaki Yumi where Asanoyama gave Mitaki Yumi his second loss of the tournament, but it was just a great back and forth battle between two up and coming Rikshi and ended up being the match between the two best Rikshi in this tournament. So it was a great match, had great circumstances around it. So that it is that is why it is our match of the Basho. Uh, we will start with Jake and he will tell us what his favorite moment of the Basho was. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily my favorite individual match by any means, but I think Asanoyama defeating Hakuho as the final match was was a uh, a very significant kind of torch passing type moment. Um Asanoyama, uh based on what we've all discussed in the past multiple times here, I think it's far from the last time that he will be a participant in the final match of the Basho, but it was really cool to see the first time that it happened and he managed to get the win over Hakuho. And a pretty decent match, even though I mean you gotta you always gotta wonder about uh Hakuho's Hakuho's left elbow that has been bandaged for a little while here. Regardless of that asterisk, I think it was a a, a real good coming of age moment for Asanoyama, and I think that's that's one of the things I'll remember most about this Basho. How about you, Mac? My favorite moment was when they delivered the Yokozuna Bento box complete with a tall glass of Kirin. I felt like a <laughs> king. And it was oh, glorious. Dang. How about you, Yokozuna Flerick? Ah, uh, other than my obvious win, I think uh, the favorite <laughs> moment was just the, on the last day when all the all the all the people were kind of working together to kind of get, make this basho happen. Uh, from people here on this podcast to Tachi Blog to getting the daily reports out, and to Conrad Metclaff, who was able to get some nice reenactments of all the fights. I Met think calf. Met calf. Yes. <laughs> uh, all that all that people come come together into a final day into was just kind of overall I think it was just put a very good uh it was a very good moment and like it left a good impression of the whole Basho to me. Yeah, I, I would have to say my favorite moment of the Basho uh, was when I ran down ringside on day 14 in the uh, Teretsu Yoshi Kiribayama match and uh, gave them what for uh, and was very politely and socially distanced uh, escorted back to my seat by security. Uh, they never they never got within six feet of me, uh, but they gave me a stern stare and I, I knew what was coming. So uh, just getting involved, I think, is is... That's the most involved I've ever been in a sumo match, and I don't think they'll ever forget me. <laughs> I think I you don't are think correct. They will either. <laughs> yep, they have a picture now saying, "Don't let Ryan's into <laughs> the Kokuki Khan." <laughs> this man right here, banned. <laughs> yeah. So, with that being said, I think it is time to wrap up the not so basho. Uh, the next time you will get basho coverage will be for the. Uh, 
not in Nagoya, Nagoya tournament. Uh, that'll be held starting July 19th in Tokyo, not in Nagoya. Uh, no fans will be allowed again, but it sounds like they will allow uh, camera people and the media in. So you'll get the similar coverage as you did in the Haru Basho. The not Goya Basho? See, that's what I was thinking. I don't know if it's better as not Goya or non Goya. I lean towards Ooh. not Goya. I think not Goya. So, yeah, the Not Goya tournament, which is how we will be referring to it from now on. Yes. Uh, we'll be starting July 19th. But until then, you can leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. Oh, my favorite part. You can find us on social media <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, that other place, Grand Sumo Breakdown. Our blog, where you can find results of this entire Not So Ba show, is grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.com. If you have any questions, comments, or corrections, drop us a line at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com or give us a call at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. And now we begin an, an entirely uninterrupted recitation of every single knock-knock joke that Mac has written over the last two weeks. Knock-knock. <clears throat> Sumo. You get your friends together and you fake some sumo. Hey, 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 yeah, yeah. It's the not so, not so basho. Not so basho, basho, yeah, yeah. Not so, not so basho. Not so basho, yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? Daniel. Daniel, who? He goes by Oyama. Hey, thank you. Uh, knock, knock. Who's there? Pencil. Pencil, who? Pencil fall down. Better wear a mawashi. Uh, 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 guys, <laughs> I got I got food in the oven. I gotta get going. <laughs> knock, yeah, knock. we all have lies. We all have lies, Flarek. <laughs> yeah. This is pressing. You, you've uh, got to take this one, Flarek. Knock, knock! <laughs> uh, who's there? Four eggs. Four eggs who? Flarek is a, for example, a Yokozuna. Hey okay. Uh, We're increasing oh. quality. But I do have a food. <laughs> hey, I got to start. Hey, I got to start off small. I got hey, whatever you say, oh. Flarek. <laughs> ah, seriously, I can keep going. Come on, guys. Knock, knock. I, I think for the sanity and hunger of Flarek and the sanity of everybody else. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well the I air horns have sounded. End it with the knock knock there, Jake. It's like seriously, guys, knock knock. Yeah, no, it will be long before that. I can promise you that. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs>